what's going on you guys I'm back with another video this is my first Kingdom Hearts video in a few months as you saw in my last Star Wars video I ranked all the movies from my least favorite to my favorite and this is what I'm gonna do with the Kingdom Hearts games let's get right into it okay with this one I didn't really play the game but I did watch a cinematic movie the story is basically trash. It has little to nothing. It has very little to do with Kingdom Hearts, with the story overall, and it doesn't really play a vital role until Kingdom Hearts 3. So basically, my least favorite is Recoded because of how trash it is. And this one is a very universally despised one, so I'm not alone with this. I'm not alone with this one. The summer after Stephanie died, I started playing Rechain of Memories, and the gameplay, once you get a hang, once you get the hang of it, it's really enjoyable. The story makes up for the gameplay being trash. If Kingdom Hearts decided to be a Yu-Gi-Oh game, you use cards, and it's this whole format thing, I'm not gonna get into it, but yeah, that's basically how you play Rechain, and the story is amazing. I'm gonna include this one simply because I did play it. It's basically a very condensed game. It literally took me two and a half hours to beat. I didn't die once. It didn't take me very long, so it's kind of a mixed blessing. All right. Y'all are probably thinking this is probably one of my favorite games of the series simply because you get to play as Roxas the entire time. And while that is somewhat true, the story drags on for a while and the bosses are hard to beat. But it does add more exposition to Roxas' character and, a, and you know, all the tension with him and the organization leading up to you know him betraying them in Kingdom Hearts 2 it it's all explained in this game if you watch a cinematic movie on 1.5 get ready for a feels trip because it's gonna make you cry all right so a lot of people hate this one because of something called attraction flow which it does show up in Kingdom Hearts 3, but in, very, but in a very condensed version. But also, I love Dream Drop Distance mainly because, I mean, it's just a really fun game. And the bosses are somewhat hard, but after a while, once you've beaten them a few times, you, you know what to do, and the story is amazing. You get to play as both Sora and Riku, and that's awesome because they're both amazing characters, and it really sets the stakes for Kingdom Hearts 3. Sleep, you're first introduced to Master Xehanort, Terra, Aqua, Ventus, of all these other characters, and it really sets the stakes for the Kingdom Hearts storyline because it's a prequel to the first game. It kind of gives you a clue of, like, who Xehanort is, and, you know, and explains why Sora, Riku, and Kairi are able to wield Keyblades. And it's overall a great story. And uh, once again, you'll be on a field trip if you play that game. The first Kingdom Hearts game I ever played. And, well... At first I didn't take it seriously. I literally just... Played it right around Destiny Islands for hours on end. And then when it came time to actually face the Heartless, I delete the save file, start over. Rinse and repeat, and then I started to actually get into the, the story, and I really wanted to beat it, and, and I did. And the overall story is amazing in the first game. And it really, really want, makes you want to come back for more. I would have had this one at number one if I did this video last summer. 
because Kingdom Hearts 2, I've beaten it more times than any other Kingdom Hearts game. It all began my fifth grade year when I had this save file and it got deleted and then I spent hours upon hours going through world after world after world after world. And it was because I was so motivated to get that save file, to get a save file back to where it was. I was so motivated to keep playing and it really made the experience that much more enjoyable. A lot of people in the Kingdom Hearts community have been complaining about this one. Because, mainly because of the ending and I'm not going to give any spoiler, but it is the best game of the series. And all of the previous games have all these, you know, like, story arcs that didn't really get their resolution. But Kingdom Hearts 3 takes all those arcs and they all get a satisfying conclusion. And the voice actor for Xehanort, both the English and Japanese voice actor, passed away in 2015. Well, first of all, in this game, we all know, we've all known for years that Xehanort's gonna die in this one. That's been confirmed for a long time. But yeah, it was a perfect send-off. The actor who played Xehanort in this one, props to you, man. It was an impossible job to do, but you pulled it off. Mr. Nimoy would be proud. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and, well, I'm glad to be back in the game making Kingdom Hearts videos, and hopefully, I'll see you guys next time. So until then, stay awesome. Bye.